Hey there, Professor Fields here. We are in Chapter 3. In this section, we're talking about the role of evidence in criminal investigations. First one we'll talk about is demonstrative evidence. This refers to anything that you uh, make as a result of the doing your criminal investigation that you use for court, such as the crime scene diagram or some photographs of the victim. This demonstrates to the jury something. Then you have documentary evidence. That's any evidence in a document form. It can also be like a bank statement, it says here. It also can be video evidence. Now, sometimes the lines are blurred between documentary evidence and testimonial evidence, and sometimes they're, they're combined together. Corpus delecti evidence establishes that a crime actually occurred. So somebody calls up and says, hey, my house was burglarized. These are the items that were taken. You get there and you look around. The items that they claim were taken aren't there. That shows that the crime actually occurred. Well, that they're reporting a crime actually occurred. If you find that stolen merchandise in the possession of a uh, crook later on, that's corpus selecti evidence. Cooperative evidence strengthens evidence that's already there. Sometimes you'll see testimony, uh, witness testimony. One witness sees it, another witness sees it, another witness sees it. They all testify. There is a point where the judge says enough's enough, and they won't allow all the uh, cooperative evidence in, but just enough to get to the, the point that strengthens the evidence that you're already presenting. Then you have cumulative evidence. Uh, evidence that supplements, but doesn't necessarily strengthen. So maybe you have um, um, some fingerprints, and they're smudge fingerprints, but they're they're uh, close enough that where they they make a uh, semi-identification, but not a positive identification. For those of you who have taken the fingerprint class, you know what I'm talking about, where in order to make a positive identification, you have to have a certain number of points that you match. Then you have associative evidence. That's evidence that provides links between crimes, crime scenes, and victims. So I'll give you an example. I had a footprint in the mud of a uh, crime scene, and then we found the uh, the shoe in the suspect's house that we searched later on. That was associative evidence. Identification evidence links the suspect to the crime, such as fingerprints, DNA, uh, dental records, bite marks, stuff like that. Behavioral evidence refers to evidence that, that identifies the type of person who may be responsible for a crime. You'll see this in serial killer cases where there's an, uh, an MO modus operandi, where they do the same thing over and over again. And a behavioral scientist may be able to say, this is the type of person that would normally commit the crime. They, they come up with a behavioral profile. We'll discuss that more in depth in a later chapter in, in this uh, course. So there you go.